All over the world, significant investment is chasing an ever-shrinking amount of Bitcoin. Have you been paying attention? There is an ongoing scramble for the last remaining Bitcoin. You can call it the Bitcoin rush. In the beginning, it was mostly cypherpunks, tech enthusiasts, and obscure investment firms that were buying Bitcoin. Fast forward to today, and mainstream investors, including hedge funds, asset management firms, and endowments, have joined the rush to buy up as much Bitcoin as they can get their hands on. The competition is about to become cutthroat. So it only makes sense that every individual's goal in life should be to acquire as much Bitcoin as possible while they have the energy to work before they reach retirement age. The question that you should be asking yourself is, how much Bitcoin should I have by this stage in my life? If you have an answer to this question, let me know down in the comments. Meanwhile, stay tuned until the end of the video, where we use existing data to determine how much Bitcoin you should have saved based on your age group. Before we jump in, if you're new around here or just beginning your Bitcoin journey, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to never miss out on the latest videos from Bitcoin Basics. If you want to be a part of a community of other like-minded individuals in Bitcoin, consider hitting the join button on this video to join the Bitcoin Basics Members Club. As a member, you'll get access to our high signal members only chat room and other members only content. And finally, this video is for entertainment purposes only and should not be taken as financial advice. With that out of the way, let's get started. Now, depending on your age, how much Bitcoin should you be holding in your portfolio? To answer this question, we need to establish two frameworks. One is how much you need to have as savings in general at what age, and the second is what percentage of that needs to be in Bitcoin. The first framework we borrowed from the median family net worth by age, a report prepared by Statistics Canada, a government agency headquartered in Ottawa that produces statistics on population, resources, economy, and society. The first noticeable trend from this table is that the median net worth for people under 35 seems very low. If it seems low to you, that is a good thing. It means that you are ahead of your peers. At a young age, it is easy to get ahead. As you age, however, it takes much more wealth to stay ahead. Nevertheless, the oldest generation has had the longest amount of time in the market to accumulate assets. They bought their home and have since paid it off. They have reached the peak earning years of their careers. Most importantly, they've benefited the most from the eighth wonder of the world, compound growth. Now, at this point, I should probably take a moment to describe the difference between mean and median values in statistics. To help explain the difference, I asked Bing AI for help, and this is what it told me. Median net worth is like the middle value when you line up everyone's net worth from least to most. It's the middle class of net worths. Mean net worth is the average, where you add up everyone's net worth and divide by the number of people. It's like that one rich friend who skews the bill at dinner. Now, after we have established the savings you need to have for the age group you are in, let's establish the framework that will guide us in determining what percentage of that portfolio needs to be in Bitcoin. Two notable investment management firms, Grayscale and Vanek, have conducted extensive studies on this topic. Their studies assume that the ideal portfolio is composed of 60% equity and 40% bonds. Vanek extrapolated returns in a portfolio with 60% equity and 40% bonds and compared it to three other scenarios in which Bitcoin is included. The three scenarios contained model portfolios containing 0.5%, 1%, and 3% Bitcoin, respectively. The study showed that the more Bitcoin was added, the more gains were realized. The most gains were realized in the third scenario, both in the short and medium term, up to five years. While the portfolio without Bitcoin had annualized returns of 9.4%, the portfolio with 0.5% Bitcoin returned 9.95%, that with 1% returned 10.65%, and the one with 3% Bitcoin returned 13.45%. This study does not indicate at what point a negative trend could start to be seen, but it does indicate that in general, Bitcoin has been one of the best performing assets, which means that having more of it in a portfolio might not have a significant negative impact, especially in the long term. However, with more Bitcoin in your portfolio, we must contend with increased volatility risk, especially in the short term. For its part, Grayscale Investments suggests that 5% of Bitcoin is the ideal amount to have in your portfolio. Every investor has unique goals and should consider their own circumstances. 
but an analysis by Grayscale Research suggests a Bitcoin allocation of approximately 5% may help to optimize a typical portfolio's risk-adjusted returns. And with that, let's get to the part you have all been waiting for. If we take 5% to be the most ideal, as suggested by Grayscale Investments, the Bitcoin you should have in your portfolio should translate as follows according to your age bracket. If you are under 35 years old today, based on the median net worth of a working family between you and your significant other, you should have roughly 0.027 Bitcoin in your portfolio. That is assuming the price is at $70,000 per Bitcoin. If you are between 35 and 45 years old, you and your partner should have at least 0.13 Bitcoin in your portfolio. If you are between 45 and 54, you and your family should have saved about 0.28 Bitcoin. If you are 55, 65, congratulations. You have worked a long and successful career and likely have much to show for it. Based on the median net worth of your cohort, you may have 0.37 Bitcoin in your portfolio. That is a lot. These predictions start to get very fun when you extrapolate the price of Bitcoin into 2030 and beyond. Of course, this does not mean that you cannot save more Bitcoin. If you have developed your conviction in Bitcoin as an asset and have been accumulating the digital gold for a while, you likely have Bitcoin worth more than your entire savings in other asset classes. The investment case for Bitcoin. In early January 2024, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission SEC approved over 10 Bitcoin exchange traded funds, ETFs, which have been on a buying spree ever since. While 900 Bitcoin are mined daily, the ETFs alone demand as much as 3,000 Bitcoin daily. Meanwhile, other jurisdictions have joined the U.S. in approving ETFs and similar financial instruments. In April 2024, Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commission approved its first Bitcoin ETFs, and the Financial Conduct Authority, the UK's top financial regulator, approved Bitcoin exchange-traded products in late May. The adoption of spot Bitcoin ETFs worldwide have changed the game around Bitcoin and will make getting your hands on Bitcoin even more costly. The fact that the supply of Bitcoin, or digital gold, is declining at a fast rate, especially with the reward halving, while the demand is skyrocketing, makes that possibility even more real. But why is it important to consider adding Bitcoin to your long-term investment portfolio? Owning Bitcoin is one of the few investment options that gives you some level of control over your portfolio. Other options, in particular stocks and bonds, require you to rely to a large extent upon the wisdom and decision-making processes of institutions whose running you have a very limited say. Meanwhile, Bitcoin offers a path out of the stagnation that investors have started to experience increasingly with portfolios that contain only traditional assets. According to the investment firm Grayscale, it is getting harder to build a diversified portfolio from traditional asset classes because of several factors. Building a diversified portfolio has gotten harder due to lower bond returns, narrowly concentrated gains in equities, higher correlations across assets, and macro risks. For a long time, stocks and bonds were the primary assets that one was encouraged to include in their portfolio, especially when considering viable returns in retirement. However, equity gains are becoming increasingly narrow. Meanwhile, after four decades of decline, the resurgence of inflation has resulted in stunted returns on bonds and similar assets. But it could be argued that the high correlation among the traditional asset classes stands out as the most challenging obstacle to the average person's saving or investing for retirement. The options available to large investment firms, such as real estate, private equity, and venture capital, to mitigate high correlation are difficult for the ordinary saver to access. Investopedia defines correlation in finance and investment as a statistic that measures the degree to which two securities move in relation to each other. In essence, high correlation means that two or more assets are generally exposed to the same risks and therefore cannot mitigate one another's potential losses. Bitcoin is deflationary and equally notable. It has a low correlation with stocks and bonds, and it is accessible to the ordinary saver as one can easily acquire and self-custody it. So, have you stacked enough Bitcoin based on your age group? If not, what do you think has held you back? If you enjoyed this video, check out my video which lays out the Bitcoin retirement strategy video in four simple steps.